Hey all you super players out there, Ben Lodice, aka Five Buck Lunch, coming at you with a new profile for the upcoming Kefla leader, the blue yellow one. Before we get into it, I just want to make a couple quick announcements. One, we have hit the 200 subscriber mark, so I will be giving away that box. I'm going to give it away on Thursday, mostly because I haven't had a chance to buy it yet. But uh, yeah, so check out the video on Thursday, and you will see who wins that box. Uh, another quick announcement is in the comments or in the description below, I have a link to a survey. I want to do a video on what people think a deck should cost and a single card should cost. And I just want to get some information from you guys on what you think that should be. So yeah, there'll be a link to a survey in the description. I'll also put it up on Facebook and a couple other places. But yeah, so please give me some information on that and we can take a look at what people's opinions on are that because I'm actually genuinely interested to see how much people think decks and cards should cost. So, uh, let's get into the deck. So, yeah, so this is the new uh, Kefla leader. It uses the Awakened Surge mechanic. So, going over it, its ability is active main once per turn. Choose one blue or yellow universe six card with energy cost of two or less from your hand and play it. Obviously, very powerful, especially in universe six. And then, Awakened Surge. Choose one blue card and one yellow card in your hand and place them under this card. You may draw four cards and flip this card over. All right, so what does that exactly mean? So... Awakened Surge is a new mechanic. Instead of Awakening, where you awaken depending on your life, Awakened Surge, you awaken at uh, any time you could normally awaken by putting a blue, yellow, or a blue, yellow, and a blue, yellow. So basically, blue, yellow doesn't count for one, for both sides. You have to put two cards total underneath it. And then one of them has to be blue, and one of them has to be yellow, or whatever color the card is. Um, this card draws four cards, so essentially you're trading two cards for four cards, which is a plus two, so it's essentially a draw two leader. Um, the secondary effect is different in all the surge leaders. They don't all draw four cards. Some of them untap energy, some of them draw, some of them do other things. Uh, drawing is very good for this leader because it gets to, to your combo pieces easier. One thing you'll note about this deck is it's much slower than the Vegeta Kaba deck that we used to have. It's much more of a like tempo kind of uh, mid-range deck rather than a rush deck. Because you're going to want to stay on your front side as long as possible. Because every turn putting in a two or less cost, if you look, we have tons of cards that generate massive advantage from that. We have Kale, which lets us put in play cards from our deck. We have Khalifa, which searches the top five. We have Hit, which gets our hit combo going and uh, also takes a card out of their hand. We have Kaba that can search top ten for or top seven for any two universe six that we want. So we want to be able to use this put in play effect at least three times. The longer we can keep it in play, the better. So after we awaken. We get two very powerful effects. Uh, active main once per turn. Your life is at four or less, and you choose one card under this card. Place it in its owner's drop area. Choose one. Draw one card. Then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards. Place it at the bottom of their owner's deck. Or at the beginning of your opponent's next main phase, choose up to three multipolar cards in your drop area and add them to your hand. So we have two very powerful effects here that, ha that we're going to use in very different circumstances. The first effect we're going to be using to get rid of uh, big problem cards. This deck has always had like issues with getting rid of stuff. We have a couple new things that help us with that, most notably our copy of Hit Rapid Movement. But for mo the most part, getting rid of big threats is going to be the job of our leader. Uh, the other effect is for if we lose our Chompa Vados and we want to get it back. Before, you had to play the one-drop Kale and you kind of had to reserve that card for in case your Chompa Vados got removed. But now we have a built-in way of our leader to get our Chompa Vados back. Also, we can use it to grab our Kefla Peak of Perfection or our Ultimate uh, for either tapping our opponent's mana down or for finishing our opponent off with the Power of Patara. This deck kind of has unprecedented access to our Secret Rare. Um, we can get it back through multiple avenues. Let that be uh, the Kefla effect or searching it off of our bold sister. There's just a lot of ways. We pretty much always have it on turn five, which is pretty crazy because it's one of the better ultimates, in my opinion. Uh, one thing to note, and this is with all the surge leaders, is that we only get to use our effects twice. So we really want to make sure that within the next two turns, we're going to be finishing our opponent uh, when we awaken. Otherwise, we're going to be kind of stuck. So now let's go into the battle cards. Uh, two Kale Timid Sisters. Uh, this is a one-drop uh, blue card, and when we play it, you can choose one blue or yellow universe six, energy cost of three or more, and add it to your hand. 
So please note that also includes the ultimate, and mostly we're going to be using it to get our Cuthless and Kales back. We can also, in a pinch, use it to get our Peak of Perfections back. Uh, for Khalifa, the Bold Sister, uh, when you play this card, look at the top five cards of your deck. Choose one blue or yellow Universe 6 card, add them in your hand. Easy enough. Please note that all these low-cost things we can put in, putting in play for free with our leader. Uh, one also thing to note about KO and Khalifa is that can't be KO'd by your opponent's skills. Just a nice little added thing there. Uh, three Dimension Magic and three Flying Nimbus. So one of the pretty crazy things about these Surge Leaders is that we get to abuse two color-specific negates. Uh, and the ones that honestly go together the best are Dimension Magic and Flying Nimbus. Even if our opponent taps us out, between Dimension Magic and Flying Nimbus, we can get a Flying Nimbus up to defend ourselves. Also, we can throw out these Dimension Magics uh, when our opponent attacks and then use our Kefla Peak of Perfection or our uh, Chop of the Trickster. So we have a lot of utility on our opponent's turn, even if we tap out on our turn. Three Flying Nimbus. Uh, this is mostly in there to counteract uh, Rush decks. We don't have a whole lot. I mean, Dimension Magic helps, but other than Nimbus, we don't have a whole lot of things to defend ourselves from Rush decks. So we need these in there. Uh, one thing to note is for side deck, specifically for this deck, you have a ton of options to go into. Since there's no restrictions and you have access to yellow and blue cards, uh, you're flying, you're going to probably up. Uh, the account number of flag nemesis against rush decks, possibly play some cards like Muataito, um, and then lower the amount of dimension magics. And then for more control decks, you're going to up the mat number of dimension magics and possibly throw in some uh, Senzu beans as well for rush decks. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of utility in these six slots. You're going to be siding in and out. Uh, four or three Khalifa Troublemaker of Universe Six. When you play this card, you may choose one card in your life, add it to your hand. If you do, choose up to one of your opponent's energy and switch it to rest mode. So this deck also has access to a mechanic that no other deck really has, at least not in terms of like how much you can do it, and that's the ability to tap your opponent's energy. Uh, Khalifa can do it. Kefla can do it on your opponent's turn. And Khalifa 4-drop can do it on your turn. So between Khalifa and uh, the two Khalifas here, we're going to be making it very difficult for our opponent to defend themselves from our attacks. Uh, we can usually use these two to tap multiple copies, uh, uh, multiple energy of our opponents, and make it very hard for them to actually counterplay it. A lot of times, if they're going to like set on four energy with like a Goku or something like that, you can drop a Khalifa and they either have to Goku that, or they just can't Goku anymore for the rest of the turn. So you're going to be playing very intelligently with how we tap our opponent's energy out. Uh, two hit half image master. One cool thing that this deck can do is drop the hit for free on an earlier turn and then evolve it later into Hit Pride of Universe 6. For those of you who don't know, Hit After Image Master is a 2-drop uh, 5k combo. When you play this card from your hand, your opponent chooses one card from their hand and sends it to their warp. So when you play it, your opponent has to warp a card from their hand. That's just kind of a little bonus. Uh, activate main, send this card to its owner's warp. For the start of your next team phase, if a leader card uh, is a yellow universe 6 card, Play this card that was sent to the warp by its owner's battle area. So one reason this card and this combo was never played before is you couldn't play this and the for the two drop sisterly bonds kale because sisterly bonds kale requires a blue universe six card and uh, hit after his master requires a yellow. Now we can do both of those things. Speaking of uh, sisterly bonds kale. When you play this card from your hand and your leader card is a universe 6 card, look at the top 10 cards from the top of your deck. Choose one blue or yellow uh, Kaba or Khalifa card among them with energy costs of 2 or less and play it, then shuffle your deck. So we're going to be using it to play uh, both uh, these Khalifas and this Kaba. And... Uh, hmm. For some reason I thought this needed... I guess it doesn't need a blue universe. Alright, whatever. But... Uh, I'm sorry, I thought this needed a blue universe six, or universe 6. I guess it doesn't. I guess you can play it uh, with anything. Your card is universe 6 card. Yeah, weird. Uh, anyways, um, this is kind of the workhorse of the deck. This is the card you're going to be wanting to play turn 1 and turn 2 if possible with your Kefla because it allows you to get to even more utility and set up for your big uh, evolving plays with Khalifas and Kales. Uh, 3 Kaba Saiyan of universe 6. When you play this card, look at the top seven cards on the top of your deck. 
Choose up to two blue or yellow Universe 6 cards among them. Add them to your hand, then shuffle your deck. If you added a card to your hand, choose one card from your hand and place it in your drop area. Also, when you play this card, if Planet Sadala is in your battle area, you can choose one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode. Uh, it can't be switched to active mode. However, we are not playing Planet Sadala, so we're not using secondary effect. Mostly, we're going to put this in play with either our leader card or our sisterly bonds kale effect. And uh, we are going to be using it to filter for whatever Universe 6 we need or are missing, uh, especially getting to Choppa and Vados. Uh, and then we discard a card, which is mostly irrelevant. Uh, for our super combo, we're going to be using Magada, Defender of Universe 6. Uh, when you combo with this card, if your leader card is Universe 6, and your life is at 5 or less, draw one card, and then combo uh, a K against 10k power for the rest of the turn. Uh, one thing to notice is since we were playing this, it's a little bit more weak to Hatchy Hack because uh, you don't get the combo power without activating the effect. But at the same time, you can use it at 5 life, which is extremely relevant considering we have a Surge Leader and staying at high life is actually important to us. Uh, 2 Chop of the Trickster. Uh, if a multicolor card is in your energy, reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by 1. When you play this card, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier. Uh, when switch it to rest mode, then draw one card uh, if it's your opponent's turn. This is just a utility card. We're going to be using it against decks that are... Uh, decks that are trying to finish us in one turn. It's very good against things like Kaioken Goku, 7-drop, uh, and certain ultimates. 3, Kale the Awakened Sister. Uh, this kind of ties in with the Khalifa the Awakened Sister. This is the old powerhouse that the deck always used to run. It has critical, and then during a battle after you combo with this card, if it's your turn, you can evolve it on top of a blue Kale card. And then when you play this card, choose one of your opponent's cards in rest mode. Uh, negate the skills for the of the turn, and then return it to your opponent's hand. So mostly, this is just going to be our critical kind of powerhouse. We're going to use it over our two-drop Kales and our one-drop Kales to kind of put pressure on our opponent. In a pinch, if we want to return something we've tapped, we can. Uh, we can use it with our Kale, Khalif, and Sister, who has the same ability, where we can play it after we combo with it. It has Double Strike. And when you play, you can choose one of your opponent's battle cards or energy and switch it to rest mode. Normally, this is going to be used to switch energy to rest mode, but we can also use it in conjunction with Kale to basically bounce any card on the field. Um, we can also use it to tap down uh, blockers and things of that sort. One important thing to note is these only come into play if you combo with Manu your turn, which is very important. Uh, one copy of Hit Rapid Movement. Um, if you have a blue-yellow multicolor card in your energy, Reduce the combo card of this cost in your hand by one. When you play this card, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, place it at the bottom of your deck. This is kind of a utility card. We can use it in a pinch to remove a card. Uh, we can, on our black side with Kefla, we can grab it back with our ability. It is also something where if we have a multicolor card in our energy, we can put it in play, or we can combo with it for free, which means we can combo and put in Champavados for one energy, which is something the deck couldn't do before. Uh, I think we're going to play a secondary copy of this card instead of this Kale because I discovered this Kale doesn't work like I thought it did and we aren't using any actual Union cards so the effect doesn't work. So remove this Kale, make it another copy of the hit. Uh, four Choppa Mottos, Gracious Day, this is another key card of the deck. Uh, it's a four cost, one K for one, has a rival, for, a rival blue yellow for one yellow. Uh, reduce the combo cost of all blue and yellow uh, Universe 6 in your hand by one. So all of these Kales, Khalifas, uh, Keflas, all this stuff becomes a free combo, which is incredibly important because it allows us to put in play multiple of these Kales and Khalifas. Uh, and it allows us to, basically our cards are just worth way more than our opponents when it comes to comboing because we have a bunch of 10Ks we can combo for free. Uh, it also has a protection effect. If this card is removed from the battle area by an opponent's skill, you may choose one card from your hand and place it in your drop area instead. If you do, this card remains in the battle area, switch it to rest mode. Choose up to one of your opponent's energy and switch it to rest mode. So if your opponent tries to use an effect to get rid of Champa and Vados, that is a uh, skill. So it doesn't work for battle. Um, instead of it being removed, it switches to rest mode and you can tap one of your opponent's energy. Uh, and then you discard a card. So it's very, very good to protect. One thing to note, um, the way this works with minusing, so let's say your opponent minuses it by 20k with a uh, baby effect, for example. Uh, what's going to happen is it's going to be considered removed by a card skill. 
You can activate the effect if you'd like to tap it and then tap one of your opponent's energy, and then it's going to be checked again for game mechanic, and it will be removed from the field by game mechanic. So basically, you can't save it from being removed from the field by its, uh, its attack being lowered to zero. But if you want, you can still discard a card to tap one of your opponent's energy with its effect, and then it'll leave. So just something to think about with kind of like an edge case scenario. Um, either way, this card is incredibly sticky, incredibly hard to get rid of, and basically runs your whole deck. You're going to want to put this in play as early as possible. Now we can even go so far if we really want to. We could put it in play on turn one. That's not as needed, but we could, for example, charge a multicolor, have the hit in our hand, use our effect, play like a Kale, for example, and then... Uh, well, I guess technically we can't put it in play. We can put it in play on our opponent's turn on our turn one. When they attack, you just combo with the hit and put in play the top of Uh Kefla, Peak of Perfection. This is another really important part in the deck, and it's how we control our energy on our opponent's turn. Uh, it does have two effects, though. It's a four cost, 20k, a rival blue yellow for one yellow. When you combo this card, if your leader card is your seven card, and your opponent's turn, you can choose one energy and switch to Tress Mode. If you do, this auto skill can't be activated for the duration of the turn. So we can tap one of our opponent's energy, but we can't use it multiple times. Once we get to, like, turn three or four, we're going to be wanting to use this on our opponent's turn almost every single turn. That, plus being able to tap things on our, on our opponent's turn, or on our turn, makes it very difficult for our opponent to play the game. We can also cycle these back with both our leader effect and our Kale Timid Sister. And then on our turn, uh, when you play this card during your turn, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, switch it to rest mode. That battle card's skills are negated till the end of your opponent's next turn. So also if we need more attackers or if we really need to tap something, say to bounce with our Kale, we can arrival this in our, on our turn and it's just an, a simple attacker. Uh, two hit pride of universe six. Uh, EX Evolve for two yellow and one anything. Dual attack. Auto bond to universe six. So we have to have another universe six in play to do this. Uh, when the card evolves in this card and your leader card is a yellow universe six card, you can have four, if you have four or more energy, flip your opponent's leader card to the front. If you do, your opponent can't activate their leader card's awaken or wish skills until the end of your next turn. So basically this is a uh, skill that does not exist anywhere else in the entire game. Uh, we can play our hit for free earlier, and then we use its active main to remove it so that our opponent can't kill it. And then on turn, uh, let's see, if you have four more energy, so we're looking at turn four, uh, when you play it, it unawakens your opponent's leader. So it flips effect to the front side, and they cannot awaken or wish until your next turn. So you get to attack them on this turn while they're at 10k and don't have any of their awakened effects. And then on their turn, they can't awaken. And then on your turn, they can awaken again if they'd like to. Um, this is mostly going to be used for like a kind of finishing blow on turn four. You evolve into this, and now you evolve into this, you've tapped some of your opponent's energy, so they don't have much energy, and you just swing in with everything. And it's just incredibly, incredibly difficult to defend yourself. One thing to note, be very careful awakening surge leaders because you are going to refresh the two cards underneath them. Now, whether that matters or not will really depend on the situation. If they already have two cards, you could probably go ahead and unawaken them because... They're, even if they awaken again and they have four cards under, they can, for the most part, only remove them one at a time. So you're probably not going to go another four turns. Um, but that is something to think about. This card is incredibly good against Wish Leaders because they, uh, they flipping a Dragon Ball Leader to its front side, uh, it literally does nothing once you get there because there's no more Dragon Balls to search. So they have no effect. Um, so yeah, a lot of really interesting things you can do with this. Uh, it also has the effect of auto once per turn, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, negated skills for each of the turn, send it to its owner's warp. Uh, at the end of your opponent's next turn, it gets played uh, in rest mode. Uh, one thing to note is that they will get any enter the battlefield effects um, uh, or any arrival type things with this effect. So be very careful what you remove. Be sure the game is going to be over or the uh, effect isn't going to matter by then. Um, and then we have our secret rare. Uh, Power of Patarda, Vegito, Kefla, and Universe 6. And like I said before, the crazy thing about this ultimate is I think three to four cards in your deck search it uh, or grab it back from the discard pile. So you should ideally pretty much have this every turn five. Uh, triple Strike Ultimate, 
Uh, if your opponent has six or more energy or has six or more cards in rest mode, which is pretty easy to do, especially since we're going to be tapping our opponent's cards. Reduce energy cost in this hand by three, so it becomes a five drop. When you play this card, choose up to four of your opponent's cards, switch on the rest mode, and then draw four cards. Uh, so yeah, this is a great finisher. Um, all you need to do is make sure that uh, your opponent has enough energy tapped where they can't counterplay it. This is going to drop down, tap your opponent out immediately, tap any blockers they have or any shenanigans with their cards on board, and then draw four cards, which is usually enough to finish your opponent. It's a triple strike 40k, and keeping in mind that your Trump of Vados is going to make all of your combo pieces, uh, all of your combo pieces, uh, 10k combo pieces cost free, then it's going to be almost impossible for your opponent to out combo it. Um, so yeah, uh, this is the deck looking at it. This deck, I think, is going to be very, very strong. It's incredibly flexible, and the mechanic of being able to tap your opponent's energy, uh, let's just say that uh, there's a reason that no one else has it. Uh, another really important thing is that he has the ability to unawaken your opponent's leader and just get very, very explosive for a turn. So yeah, uh, a lot of utility, a lot of advantage, a lot of filtering. You can be able to get whatever cards you want very easily. Uh, this is the deck I'm actually looking at playing going into the next format. Uh, I have always really liked the Universe 6 deck in terms of what it can do and how many options it has. And But I never really liked the like super aggressive play style that Vegeta and Kaba required you to play. So yeah, this deck's going to be very strong going forward and is my pick to be one of the Tier 1 decks. Um, pick If you want to play this deck, another quick thing, pick up your cards now because Khalifa and Kale the Awakened Sister are both really, really cheap right now, and um, I think they're going to go up in the future because at one point they were both $20 cards, now they're both under $10, and if this deck really takes off, they both have a big chance of going up. So yeah, everyone, please like, subscribe. Uh, please go do that survey below so I can get that information for the video. Uh, I know everyone has very strong opinions on the prices of cards, so this should be a fun one to do. Go out there, play some super, and have some fun.